Ladies and gentlemen, our next session is titled The Upcoming Revolution in the Telecom Sector, moderated by Samuel Burke from CNN. So my question is for you, is this the right premise? Is there an upcoming revolution in the telecom sector? Have we already lived it, or is that a lot of hype? We'll start with you, Mr. Zhao. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to join you at this session. Uh, you raised a very good question. I think that uh, we should not forget that uh, uh, Google has uh, made a lot of progress over a recent uh, decade, and a lot of success. But uh, if you look at the situation, Google did not have uh, any places they can make a business if there's no telecom infrastructure there. So that is uh, something that we should not forget. And in my opinion, uh, Google indeed gave us a lot of uh, new applications which added value to our telecom services. So for me, it's not uh, that kind of uh, thing I could imagine that in the future telecom will be replaced by Google. Rather, I would say that uh, Google and the telecom will continue to go together, side by side. And uh, I, I'm very pleased to tell you that ITU, as the United Nations specialized agency for ICT, ITU has uh, uh, not only government as our members, we also have a lot of uh, ICT industry as our members. And uh, recently, two years ago, Google joined ITU as a member as well. So in ITU, we not only have uh, telecom, but we also have uh, Google, Facebook, Alibaba. So these are our ICT players in the market, and we encourage them to work together. Right. So Mr. Mansuri, if I'm listening to Mr. Zhao correctly, I don't hear friend, enemy, competitor out of these tech companies. So what are they to you? Do they pose a challenge to uh, the telecoms companies? For uh, looking at it from regulator point of view, we are always looking for uh, having uh, balance from uh, customer interest with, the, with, the, with the fostering innovation and R&D environment, and also make sure there is a fair competition for the customer from, from that side. Always any kind of change will happen in that sector. We are always revising or testing our uh, current uh, regulation. We make sure that we, we, we are uh, fast in changing our regulation if, if our regulation need to be changed. And the most important thing is uh, to be ready for any kind of changes in, changes in that sector to support the society and, the, and the, uh, our customer in the, in the UAE, which is the UAE, UAE citizen. So Mr. Sultan, if, I, if I'm listening correctly, I don't hear a big revolution from your esteemed colleagues here on the stage. The players who were the dominant forces in telecoms before this tech revolution, before the IT revolution, still seem to be, for the most part, the, the same players. So is this whole revolution not really a telecoms revolution? No, I don't think that there will be a revolution. I mean, uh, I think that the telecom industry did a very good job in bringing the situation as what it is today, which is, you know, uh, connectivity as a basic human right, that uh, the situation today. Now, there has been serious disruption models, and probably that the telecom industry, one has to admit, uh, was not as good in, as they were in infrastructure and building this infrastructure. The telecom industry was not as good in their reaction and adaptability to new business models, disruptive business models. Now, the disruption is happening at, at various fronts and dimensions. I mean, quantum, when you just imagine uh, that uh, in one minute of internet, uh, you have, in 2018, you had 266,000 hours watch on Netflix, and in 2017, this number was 70,000, so more than three times uh, speed in having things done. Uh, we, t we speak about the fourth, uh, on the stage, about the fourth industrial revolution. It took 68 years for the airplane industry to reach uh, 50 million uh, customers. It took 19, 19 days for Pokemon Go. So 
<laughs> These are yeah. the reality to which uh, you have to adapt. So for companies in the telco that have established, some of them have decades of life and have been a lot of them, the main, uh, uh, the main players being uh, a state uh, a history and the legacy of state-owned company, I think we cannot ask as well that we can change radically overnight these business models. So if, so, if, I, if I just may ask you, what do you think is the biggest threat to telecom companies business-wise? Who poses the biggest competition that could start a revolution? I mean, a lot of, the, now we've been saying the ecosystems today are much more multi-stakeholders, multi-players. Now, depending on where the telecoms are moving, the players are of different kind. There is not one service that the telecom industry is offering or used to offer that global players are not offering in a totally different business model, pricing model, etc. I think the biggest threat is not to be able to change and to adapt. I mean, when in the beginning, the dividend was taken from customers. You have more customers, you're creating more value. Now we move to the data dividend because uh, if you are able to monetize your data, you are ripping the dividends of you know, the ec ecosystem. Today, it's the experience dividend. So this is where the customer experience dividend. So if we don't move into really being totally customer experience centric, then we will be the, uh, the, 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 best en the worst enemy of ourselves. I can see you want to jump in, yeah. Mr. Al Mansouri. Uh, we always have, we are looking for three main mega trends. Okay. We're talking about uh, content. Content? And, yeah, we feel the sector should change from working as a vessel, moving the voice and data from one place to another place, and starting uh, creating contents. Creating content. Yeah, and this is, we can see it from, from other OTTs and other applications. Do you mean much in the way that AT&T purchased CNN? Something like changing from a normal telecommunication company to digital company, okay. and also from data. I think the sector should finish, uh, uh, should stop only selling raw data. And because uh, there in the sector, you will see them happy of uh, making money from selling raw data. I think data need to be uh, uh, processed. It is, it is the new generation oil, and it, this is need to be focused on. And VR and, and AR, this is one of the technology we expect it to, be, to come and to change the business model in general from uh, marketing to education to health. And VR, AR, as my colleague uh, Mr. Athman Sultan mentioned, people virtual reality and people understanding this technology through the game, which is Pokemon Go. I'm going to get right to you in a second, Mr. Zab. I can see that Mr. Sultan wants to jump in on that. Yes, I mean, do, you, do you think that's a good idea, though, that the telecoms companies become content companies? Is there a history to show that they can do that uh, well? There, there has been trials since the mid-'80s when Vivendi acquired Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. So far, we had, do not have any evidence of how success. These are totally different DNAs, but His Excellency is absolutely right. We cannot be a pipe, even if we try to make it a smart pipe. Now, something is happening which, when, with the construction of the ecosystem where everything becomes sensing, the IoT. The, everything becomes what? Sensing. Sensing. The Got Internet it. of Things. Yep. Everything, Everything has a us, sensor, from, and from cars to... Tens of to... millions of sensors everywhere. Everything becomes connected, and everything becomes smarter. This is where you see all these buzzwords, IoT, big data, Internet of Things, uh, AI, blockchain. You, you see that as an opportunity to we charge see this for data. clearly as an opportunity. I think because of this, because of the connectivity will be more and more, in my opinion, at the center, if we manage to make our pipes smarter, we will have an opportunity to really get a, a, a bigger share of the pie than the one that we can claim. Today. You're doing my job perfectly for me, Mr. Sultan, because I wanted to ask Mr. Zhao about 5G next, and nothing could get us there quicker than talking about the Internet of Things. Although, as we were talking before the session started, you talked about here we are discussing 5G all the time, there's so much hype, yet there is so much of the world that still doesn't have Internet access. Forget 5G, 4G, 3G. 
So are we putting the conversation too fast? Are we creating a, a two-tiered world, one with the internet and literally half of the world without the internet? Yeah. Um, you, you ask questions to my friend Osman that uh, what is uh, his uh, main competitors? Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, that the uh, main competitor may come from those areas whether you are able to provide a basic infrastructure to connect people not connected yet. Places to, like, for example? We have still half population not connected online yet. Yeah. So we have to have a lot of areas to try to work together with more partners to reach these people. So that is one. And also, we talk, you talk about 5G. That is also, we have to upgrade the current infrastructure from a lower, you know, earlier technologies now to the more advanced technologies like 4G, 5G. And ITU now is working in both areas. And we consider that uh, uh, ITU, why over 153 years uh, history, we are still very relevant to the market because uh, we always work with innovations and uh, we always work with our partners uh, for new and uh, advanced technologies. 5G is our latest uh, technology we're working on and uh, this year, Later this year, from uh, end of October to November, we will have our biggest uh, world radio conference be held in Shamashinka of Egypt, where we will fix 5G technologies. Also, we have a lot of 5G trials uh, you know, in many countries, but the 5G technology will be finally approved by ITU only. This is no competition. This is only ITU global standards uh, process. And then we also we have fixed the spectrum for this world, which means what? Which means in the future, the 5G will be further developed with uh, uh, you know, market uh, in expectation. And this, uh, uh, today we talk about the Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, cloud computing. In my opinion, nothing will be fully implemented if we do not have 5G. So 5G will be real technology for everything in the next decade. The ITU is working on this one, but again, let me tell you. September last year, I was in Lesotho. Lesotho is a country, Africa country, yep. the south part of Africa. I was uh, informed by authority that uh, they already get the first 5G service uh, in Africa. So and I the was there. The first 5G service yeah, in yeah, Africa. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they did have uh, a trial uh, network, and they did offer very limited uh, services to some special uh, you know, ecosystems. But I also noted that. I went to the countryside. In the primary school, secondary school I visited in the mountain area, yeah. they have no 3G. No 3G. They have no internet connections. So this is not far away from the capital. So that, and uh, and the, who is providing them with the 5G in the capital? Uh, capital, I think that this is uh, their uh, local company uh, with uh, use equipment from, from Huawei. Yeah. And um, I think that uh, in the capital, they already you know, have this 3G, 4G, 5G continued. Uh, but of course, uh, that 5G is not what uh, we would uh, see uh, in, in, a few, in the future, because that is uh, 5G satisfies the basic requirement. ITU is working on the final set of standards to be fixed this year for the future, for the next decade. But just to make sure that I understood you correctly, I, I, I want to make this clear. So what you're saying, the real threat is if the telecoms companies don't provide service to those Definitely. rural areas, like in Lesotho, for example. Definitely. Then if you're the telecom face company they will not provide 3G, they're not there anymore. They will not provide 4G, they will not be there neither. And they were not prepared to have 5G, they will not be, you know, uh, any chance for them. But this is the problem for our telecom people because there are in difficulties, they have their own competition among themselves, and they have a very pre big pressure from the market to have low price, and the government want to have some, some kind of income from this kind of a business, but they need a investment for the new technologies upgrading, and you talked about Google, Facebook, that is another one who will come. So now, my problem is, who will invest in the future? Up to now, as I mentioned, Today is mainly the telecom guys who put a lot of investment in the infrastructure. Yeah. And in the future, we still need infrastructure development. Therefore, at our, our ITU plenary potential conference meeting last uh, year, we, we had our meeting two, two months ago here. I was re-elected. 
at that meeting as the Secretary General for next uh, four years. I put the four I's as my priorities. Four I's. Four I's. Infrastructure. Infrastructure. Investment. Investment. Innovation. Innovation. Inclusiveness. Inclusiveness. Why infrastructure is important? So because the half be population is not connected yet. Yeah. And because we still need to upgrade the current infrastructure to 5G or even, even, even more advanced. D so we, we need this one. And then we need investment. We, we have to create a good environment to encourage investment in ICT. And here, you, my, you may mention another question. Whether the telecom will purchase CNA <laughs> or Google will purchase uh, in a telecom. I yeah. that uh, it all depends. What they do. Uh, I, I'm we, not uh, trying to say that it's only one side to purchase another side. We just have about four minutes left, so I just want to ask you, Mr. Almanzuri, do you think what Mr. Zhao was talking about is applicable to here in the UAE, for example? I mean, do you worry about the, the rural areas, or do you have much more coverage? We, than... we have coverage 100% in the UAE. We have no issue with that one. And uh, always uh, our concern to have uh, new technology, higher speed, always to our, to our customer. Uh, we always uh, urge uh, the telcos to, to invest more in R&D and innovation. Uh, we score high even in providing uh, telecommunication uh, services as uh, international indexes. We have also high speed. We are ranked like uh, one of the best 10 speed worldwide. So we have no big issue with, with, the, with, the, with the coverage or, or any rural area. So does that mean you have to stay focused then on what will be the Internet of Things where you need to be in no, we need, invested? We need, we need to uh, also... Uh, you see, uh, there is a statistic talking about that uh, the federal uh, policy not updated 68% uh, from the federal policy worldwide not up uh, updated. So always in, in, the, in the sector in, uh, in general, we make sure that we revise our policy between time to time. We make sure that we can adopt, uh, adopt this new technology. And we can go for any kind of change. So always we, we, we need to create uh, and foster innovation uh, environment, R&D environment, and make our uh, uh, citizen happy as much as we can. I'm going to steal a line from my colleague, Richard Quest. I was his producer for a long time. And he ends every episode of Quest Means Business by saying, whatever you're up to, I hope it's profitable. So my real question for you, uh, Mr. Sultan, is if you were just investing in one place, you talked about trying to profit off the Internet of Things, of those of which there are many, from toasters to self-driving cars, where would you or where are you putting most of your money? Is it, are you going to be making money off of self-driving car infrastructure? That means the stoplights are talking to the cars. Is it the smart refrigerator? Where are you going to make your money on, on these things connected to the Internet? Yeah, I, I think it's on that front difficult to be very accurate in predicting long. But there are headlines. Okay. You need to continue having the best infrastructure. Infrastructure? Uh, we'll move into 5G with determination. But if we believe that 5G is only a matter of infrastructure, any telco will be making a big mistake. Why? 5G is going to give bigger speed, bigger capacity at a different, totally different uh, dimension. Yep. Yes. This telcos are good because engineers and they're good in doing planning. But the change in behavior or application or services, the disruption and things we do in our daily life will create totally new ecosystem that we haven't yet imagined. That we can't so we imagine. need to do things differently for doing this. This is what we have not been good in the past decade in, in doing, when all this world around the internet and the apps have been doing. This is where we were playing catch up. We need, uh, in, I, I, I strongly believe that we need to take 5G and start doing, we have to revisit the way we price things. We have to revisit the way we offer things. And so this is one area we invest in, infrastructure. The other areas we need to continue have our IT infrastructure uh, as best in class because the name of the game now is how you offer services, how, and of course, what drives this have to be again back to the customer experience part. Customer so experience. these are the three areas where I don't have any doubt that we need to just press on the gas and go full speed in that.
Osman Sultan, CEO of Do Telecom, His Excellency Hamad Al Mansouri, and His Excellency Huin Zhao. Thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Thank you.